Hey listeners, I love making this podcast, and I think it's important work. I love sharing these conversations with you, but it takes time and money to make it happen. I need your help to keep making it and bringing you these conversations. Would you consider supporting this podcast with a monthly donation? Monthly supporters will receive bonus content and access to patron-only benefits through Patreon. You can go to the website, wdtatpodcast.com, and click on support to make a donation or sign up for the Patreon. Thanks for listening, and thanks for your support. Halloween is over. Holiday decorations and Christmas stuff have been on the shelves for a couple months now. Most of us have some mixed feelings about the weeks and months ahead. For some of us, Christmas was magical when we were growing up, full of wonder and surprise. We grow up and that magic fades for a lot of reasons. Life gets hard and busy and messy, but we still long for, hope for, a spark of those moments to break into our lives during this season. Sometimes we try so hard to make it happen, to create the magic for ourselves or for our children that we end up with just stress and anxiety. For others, The holiday season just serves as a reminder of so many things that are wrong, broken. It's a reminder of the people that are missing from the dinner table for one reason or another. The people we have lost, those who were taken by tragedies or diseases or just time, those who left by suicide, those who are lost in their addictions. No matter what happened, There is an absence that lingers in the air, whether we talk about it or not. For some, this time that is idealized as one of welcome and belonging feels more like rejection and loneliness. We don't live up to the expectations of our families or loved ones in some way or another, and we feel acutely our differences and our unwelcome We long for connection, but find instead isolation and heartbreak. For some of us, maybe it doesn't feel so tragic, but we're uncomfortable. We feel uneasy with the materialism of the season. We can't afford the kind of season that our kids have come to expect. We're worried about money, but don't want to ruin the festivities. We don't know how to respond when that one relative inevitably says something offensive or something that makes us uncomfortable. We're tired of listening to it, but we don't want to pick a fight. For these and so many other reasons, we can feel like we are hanging by a thread during this time. The smallest thing might unleash emotions in a torrent of tears or obscenities. We can feel fragile and unsure of what to do. We hope that we can at least survive, get through the worst of it, and try to forget about it until next year. Maybe there are some things we can do to try and make the holidays a little better, one small step at a time with realistic expectations. I want to share a story that might help. It's called The Christmas Shoes. (laughs) Just kidding. That's a terrible story and very problematic. Sorry, not really sorry if you really like that story, but maybe that's a topic for another episode. I have found some solace in the story of Santa Claus. No, not that guy on the Coca-Cola can. No, not the Miracle on 34th Street guy either. No, not, not even the Kurt Russell version from the Christmas Chronicles. That one was kind of fun, though. 
No, I'm talking about St. Nicholas, the real historical figure who lived during the 3rd century in a village called Patara in what is now the country of Turkey. That's right, the real-life Santa Claus was also a Middle Eastern guy who looked a lot more like the bad guys in most 80s action movies than Ed Asner or Tim Allen. His wealthy parents, who raised him to be a devout Christian, died in an epidemic while Nicholas was still young. Obeying Jesus' words to sell what you own and give the money to the poor, Nicholas used his whole inheritance to assist the needy, the sick, and the suffering. He dedicated his life to serving God and was made Bishop of Murrah. Bishop Nicholas became known for his generosity to those in need and his love for children. When I had kids, I wanted to find ways to make the holiday season more meaningful for us as a family. One of the things I decided to do was tell them about the real, historical St. Nicholas. It was my way of getting out of the question about what to tell them about Santa Claus. So I told them about the real St. Nicholas. And among the many legends about him, this is one of my favorites. Now... Keep in mind that this legend is from the 3rd century, and there are lots of things that were different about the culture, customs, and beliefs at the time. The Story of the Dowries There was a man, once rich, who had fallen on hard times. Now poor, he had three daughters of an age to be married. In those days, a young woman's family had to have something of value— a dowry to offer prospective husbands. The larger the dowry, the better the chance a young woman would find a good husband. Without a dowry, a woman was unlikely to marry. This poor man's daughters, without dowries, were therefore destined to be sold into slavery, or worse. Word of the family's misfortune reached Nicholas, who had the wealth inherited from his parents. Coming in secret by night, he tossed a bag of gold into the house. It sailed in through an open window, landing in a stocking left before the fire to dry. What joy in the morning when the gold was discovered, and the first daughter soon was married. Not long after, another bag of gold again appeared mysteriously. The second daughter was then married... And the father, now very anxious to know who the secret benefactor was, kept watch during the night. A third bag of gold landed inside the house, and the watchful father leapt up and caught the fleeing donor. "'Ah, Nicholas, it is you!' cried the father. "'You have saved my daughters from certain disaster!' Nicholas, embarrassed and not wishing to be known, begged the man to keep his identity secret." You must thank God alone for providing these gifts in answer to your prayers for deliverance. I love this story because it turns the mythology of Christmas upside down and inside out. The tradition we've become accustomed to says that the giving and receiving of gifts is an expectation and an obligation. What's even worse is that the giving of gifts by the figure of Santa Claus is directly connected to a judgment of the value of the children receiving the gifts. The idea of Santa's list is a softer, gentler boogeyman, like the scary fairy tales of old that were used to frighten children into behaving. But the legend of the real Santa Claus, St. Nicholas reveals something else. Someone from a place of wealth and privilege sees the needs of others and gives, not out of obligation or expectation, but out of their abundance and generosity. He gave in secret, shunning any reward or credit for his good deeds. What would our celebration of this holiday season look like if we followed the example of St. Nicholas.
So I know that this season can be very difficult for many people. It's okay to admit that and find ways to take care of yourself. One thing that I think can make a difficult time better is when we find ways to also take care of each other. You are not alone. There are others also struggling, and there are so many ways that we can give to each other out of our abundance. If you have a smile or a kind word to give, it could make a huge difference to someone. If you have an extra seat at your table, invite someone that needs a place to feel like they belong and are loved to share a meal with you. Finally, remember that talking about things that are hard helps us all to learn, grow, and understand each other better. I hope we can all find ways to be more like St. Nicholas this season and make things a little better for those around us who are struggling in some way through the holidays. Thanks for listening to this episode of We Don't Talk About That with Lucas Land. If you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Help us spread the word by sharing it on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with the handle at WDTAT Podcast. You can also rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. You can support the podcast by visiting our website at WDTATpodcast.com and clicking on support. If you sign up to become a patron for as little as $1 a month, you will get access to bonus content like another holiday episode where I answer listener questions about the things that make the holidays difficult. Thanks for your support. We would love to hear from you. Leave us a voicemail by going to our website and clicking send voicemail. Your voicemail could be featured in a future episode. You can also email us at wdtatpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks to the St. Nicholas Center for their permission to use the material from their website, stnicholascenter.org. That's S-T-N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S center.org. The music in this episode is from Scott Buckley and is available on his website under a Creative Commons license at scottbuckley.com.au. That's S-C-O-T-T-B-U-C-K-L-E-Y dot com dot A-U. Thanks, and have a happy holidays.